Hi there, welcome to volume lesson number six, which is on surface area of the cylinder. Now this is the last bit of knowledge that I'm going to give you as part of the National 5 volume topic. Now clearly it's not actually volume, but it's wrapped up in that kind of 3D shapes idea. The last thing we'll look at is surface area of the cylinder. Now you've worked with surface area before. In National 4 you looked at surface area of cuboids, maybe sub-triangular prisms as well. Uh, the cuboid one was where we had the fountain area, the front and the back and the sides and the top and the bottom and add them all together. The surface area of the cylinder, we are looking to find the surface area, the area of the surface, what area of paper would we need to wrap up that cylinder. Now, there's two things you need to do basically. If you're looking to find the surface area, you need to know the area of the top and the area of the bottom but they're going to both going to be the same. They're going to be both circles, and we find the area of a circle by pi r squared. The last bit is the area of that curved surface around the middle. That's all going to be one face, and we'll deal with that in a wee second. But the other thing we need to find is a curved surface area. So we've got two circles, and we've got the curved surface area. If we add them together, we'll get the total surface area. So that's our script, that's how we're going to do it. Now the circles are obviously dead easy, we know how to do that, we've done that lots. The curved circles area is a tricky thing, the thing that makes this a national fine question. So here, if you look at a cylinder, when you unravel a cylinder, your two circles on top, nice and easy, that's going to be pi r squared and pi r squared. That curved surface area around the area, uh, curved surface area around the middle, is a little bit more tricky. And now it is going to be a rectangle. If you think about unraveling that, that cylinder, it's going to make a rectangle. If you're struggling to see that, what I'd like you to do is go and get a toilet roll tube, cut it up the middle and unravel it. See what happens. And, and same with the next bit. If you're struggling to see what happens in the next bit, have a look at your toilet roll tube. Now that bit here, and that bit here, that's just going to be the height of your cylinder. When you unravel it, that's not going to change. That's going to be H. Your tricky bit is from here along to here, what distance is that? Now because that's unravelled from here all the way around to here, that distance is just going to be your circumference. Because that matches up to the circumference of your circle, that's just going to be pi d. So the area of that curved surface area, we call it area 2 just for us in the middle just now, that's going to be pi d multiplied by h. So if you can do that for the middle part, do pi r squared for the top, and then the answer for the bottom will be exactly the same because it's got to be the same circle because it's a prism, and we know the cross section doesn't change. We can add all those together to get the curved surface area. That may be a good start for your note. I'm going to do two examples, I think. Not just the one, and then I'm going to leave you. Okay, so here we've got a cylinder. If we mark them into our areas, let's call that area 1, area 2, area 3. Area 1 is a circle, so it's just going to be pi r squared. Now the radius given to us there is pi times 2.4 squared. So the pi times 2.4 squared is going to give the answer 18.1 centimetres squared. Now if area 1 is 18.1 centimetres squared, then area 3 has to be exactly the same they're both the same circle because a prism it won't change. Area 2 is your tricky bit. Area 2 is going to be that length there multiplied by that length there. Now that top length, same as the circumference, is going to be pi d. So it's going to be pi d multiplied by this length here, which is just the height. So pi d multiplied by the height. So the diameter is pi times Oh, it's not 2.4, that would be a daft mistake. 5 times 4.8, and then the height of the cylinder is just 8. 5 times 4.8 multiplied by 8 is going to give me 120.6. So you 7 and so on. Round it to three decimal, uh, three significant figures, it'll be 1, 2, 1 centimetres squared. Okay, we're talking about area. Now, even though it's part of a 3D shape, area itself is a two-dimensional thing, so it's centimetres squared. And then the total area to finish off, so the surface area of that cylinder, it's going to be 18.1 
uh, the 18.1 add 1 to 1, which is going to be 157.2 centimeters squared. Now that's it. That's what you have to do. The, the tricky thing is staying on top of that. The fact that that bit there is pi d. That's the thing that makes it a national five question. But that is your example, and that's how you work it. I know that might be a bit messy this time. I apologise, but obviously yours will be much much neater. There's two examples. Okay, first we've got a cylinder. Okay, for obviously the diameter, the nine point one in there. You maybe have to change that, and then the second one is a is a bit Heinz baked bean tin. If you get into the surface area, the metal involved, and I'll put answers up in two seconds if you want to. Record. There you go. Right, thanks very much. That's all your knowledge for the volume topic done. And what I'll do is I'll also do one more presentation that involves past paper questions that you can use for revision, and I'll try and get that up quite soon as well. But there's the six lessons you'll use to work within your classes. Thanks very much. Let us know if you have any questions.